the past, we already have looked at some examples of retrieval augmented generation pattern. But can you use this pattern together with streaming data? For example, you have some data coming from Apache Kafka, and then you transform this data together with Apache Flink. Can we apply that pattern to Apache Flink applications? And the answer is yes. And in this video, I will show you how to do it. For the scenario, let's imagine a user support system where we get the requests or questions from the users as a stream. And then with Apache Flink, we use a large language model and an additional data store where we have the information about the product, uh, about which the questions are, uh, in a vectorized form so that we can combine large language model together with information about the product to answer a question from a user. The product for which we are going to build our sample user support application is called uh, Blip Blob, and it's uh, a robot which can help you around the house with a variety of different tasks. Uh, so I created a list of everything which Blip Blob uh, is capable of doing, for example, uh, helping you with uh, coffee, uh, having the cleaning mode. Uh, I just imagined a robot which I would totally benefit having in my house. So those features then we can incorporate uh, within our application. And I have some other supporting functions to connect to OpenSearch, for example, that will be our vector store, as well as extra variables, which I will need to connect to other things. Our application can be split into three major parts. The first one is to store all that knowledge about blip blob features in the vector store. This is where we are going to uh, take all the embeddings about the different features which we have in this features JSON file and then uh, put them into a vector store. And here I am using my open search service for that. Second step is to create some kind of a rag service which is capable to connect to a large language model and to our vector store and then to get a question which we have and answer that question using those two uh, things. And this is uh, where the whole retrieval augmented generation pattern is uh, living. And using this service, we will be able to create our Flink job, which will uh, read all the incoming stream data and then answer those records one by one and then output the result for us to see. So this is the plan and let's start with the first part and store the knowledge about our tiny cute robot in the vector data store. Here I'm using the Langchain 4J. This is a Java version for the library Langchain and it has all the pieces that we need. It has support for the embedding models. It has also support for the large language models and vector stores. Uh, so for the uh, embedding model, which we do need to transform the features of our robot into the vectors uh, to store them in the vector store, I am using uh, the OpenAI uh, embedding model. This is how it looks and I rely on the Langchain 4J uh, library for that. You don't necessarily have to go with OpenAI, you have multiple other options. Among the interesting one, I wanted to point out that you can actually take one of those open source models and then embed it um, uh, into the code. Uh, for example, I tried this MiniLM L6 v2 and it worked magnificently. Um, I also tried it quantized uh, version, also worked quite well. So you don't have to make a request to an external API if you would prefer to avoid that. Uh, so this is for the embedding model. Next one, we need, of course, to have some uh, vector store, uh, so some database which is capable to work with vectors or with embeddings. Uh, for this, I'm using OpenSearch. Here I'm using the OpenSearch client to create the connection and to provide all the information about the host, uh, user, password and the rest. Uh, so you can uh, double check that if you want. Uh, but uh, our goal is actually to create this embedding store because this is the object with which the uh, Langchain 4J is working with. Uh, and there we provide the client itself so that the uh, embedding store uh, has the knowledge of how to connect to our open search uh, library um, and that's it. 
And the last part is to iterate over all the features and then to uh, get those segments, embed them, and then store them in the vector store. So if we run this code, that should do exactly that. Okay, it says data successfully stored, but let's actually verify that. We can check it out by looking at the OpenSearch index using OpenSearch dashboards. And by the way, I'm using Ivan for OpenSearch. And if you're curious to get extra credits for that and use it yourself, the link is in the description. Since we didn't provide any particular index name, our vectors were stored in the default index. And here, for example, we can see the first element, uh, which has information about this coffee brewing capability of our robot. Uh, and it has also a vector as a long list of all those numbers, um, which is describing the information which we have about that feature. And the rest uh, is looking good as well. So we have 10 items overall, and these are corresponding to the 10 features which I had uh, in the list in the features JSON file over here. So I think that part worked well. Let's move on and now let's work on this service which we need to to use the data that was stored in that uh, vector data store together with the capabilities of a large language model to answer questions from our potential users about blipblop. The first part will be quite familiar because we have done this already, defining the embedding model, defining the embedding store and providing all the information how to connect to OpenSearch. Um, and in this case, we do need again those elements because first of all, we will need to convert the question coming from the user into another vector because that vector then will be compared to all the vectors which we already have stored in the embedding store. So uh, Langchain4j does a lot of uh, things uh, for us behind the scenes uh, to call uh, those elements and uh, provide this additional context. Um, so that makes our life a bit easier. To embed the question, we are going to rely on the embed function on the embedding model. And this one will be for that singular embedding for the question itself. Then to find the relevant embeddings to relevant information in our vector store, we are going to use find relevant uh, function where we are providing that embedding for that question, we can also provide here additional details uh, if you want to uh, to improve uh, the responses which you get from that vector store according to your particular scenario. Then we will need to involve a large language model. And this is where we need to create a prompt to that model that has uh, some question and includes that additional information which we get from the relevant embeddings. And finally, we make request to the large language model. For the large language model, I'm using OpenAI again, but you don't have to use OpenAI if you don't want to. There is a variety of large language models supported by Langchain for j uh, from which you can select uh, whatever you prefer. With this service, and let me remove this part, now we don't need it, now we have the answer. With this service, we now can uh, request the answers for our questions. So it's time to create the AI jobs, job uh, which will be processed by Apache Flink. As always, here we start by defining environment for Apache uh, Flink. And here I'm using the stream execution environment for that. Then we define the stream of questions and this is probably the information that will come from Apache Kafka or some other source. We run the get answer on each of those questions. Then we request to print those answers and once we are done, we can say we are ready to execute the environment. Having this code, now I'm ready to create a jar file. For the jar file, of course, obviously some information from the home uh, XML is necessary. So again, you can check the complete version of this repository in the GitHub to see all the other pieces which are important. Once the jar is ready, I can submit it to the Flink job.
So the job has been successfully finished. So let's see what we have there in the logs right now. Okay. The first question which we asked uh, was, what do I do if it is dark? Very vague question. If it is dark and you are feeling uneasy, you can activate Liplop's nighttime mode by saying Liplop nighttime mode. This will ensure that your home is secure by checking all windows and doors and so on. Then we asked, how do I clean my bathroom? Uh, Wait, do we have to clean your bathroom using Blip Blop? You can simply say whatever. Uh, and finally, how to make a cup of cappuccino? We have the Blip Blop's coffee brew and service mod. Isn't it amazing? Sounds like a dream. So, this is how you can use rug pattern together with Apache Flink when you want to process your streaming data.